Today's um, topic for this conversation is the pursuit pursuit of uh, liquidity, and we can't not talk about uh, technology. Uh, I want to come back to one of the points you mentioned earlier uh, in terms of the leadership in the marketplace. And one of the things that you all do is uh, accurate predictive uh, models. So how do you all apply AI in finance? Uh, more specifically, obviously, capital markets and trading. Uh, is there risk around uh, data biases? And how do you think this may be something that regulators will look at? Yeah, I mean, there are a few different things embedded in your, in your question, right? So I, uh, I'm a, I, have a, I have a PhD in statistics, right? Uh, and uh, 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 many of the terms that that, uh, that we use today, is terms like data science, uh, were invi invented when I was in grad school. So I'm part of that generation that kind of gave a rise to uh, the the the, technolo the AI and data uh, centric uh, world that we live in today. So maybe my view is biased, but my personal view is uh, we ought to stop looking at technology like AI. Uh, and uh, the, the, the general power of cloud computing, computing in general, as well as the use of data and the power of data, uh, as if it's you know still a emerging phenomena, it's something new and novel. Uh, we need to start looking more at things like computing and data as fundamental resources that the world runs on. We need to start thinking about computing and data uh, the same way we think about roads, bridges, cargo ships, you know, water, electricity, crude oil, right? These are now uh, a fundamental, more and more, in fact, uh, a fundamental uh, uh, assets and infrastructure that the world economy and the world itself is built on top of, right? We just spend all this time talking about global electronic of global markets and cryptocurrencies, and these are great examples of precisely that. These are things not built on new roads and new bridges. Uh, they are still built on a lot of electricity, <laughs> but uh, uh, these are things that's built on computing and data, right? So I, I think from institutions' point of view and from government's point of view and academia point of view, uh, we really ought to focus on uh, investment and the growth of these resources. And there's a real question that's emerging as well in terms of uh, a public and private ownership of some of these critical resources as well, right? And uh, I mean, the other question that you you asked that's uh, 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 around, you know, how should you know, are, how, are regular, how should regulators think about it? How should governments think about it? Um, and again, different governments across the globe are thinking about it a little differently. At least in the US, I think the risk choose towards um, us not being aggressive enough in embracing computing data and ultimately art, uh, technology like artificial intelligence uh, 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 in tackling some of our most critical problems, right? Critical problems such as climate, right? Critical problems such as crimes and inequality, right? These are real problems that are uh, fundamental to our future and our kids' future and problems that we have a real chance to make breakthrough in by leveraging the unprecedented amount of computing power, data, and methods and uh, technologies like artificial intelligence in tackle, right? The, 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 the story of sales security so far has been the story of building a firm and a business on the back of the electronification, the automation of financial markets by leveraging a lot of computing, a lot of data, by leveraging techniques like artificial intelligence. And in a sense, we have resolved the problem of trading and dramatically increased the efficiency of how financial markets operate today, right? And, and we fully expect that similar things ought to be happening in areas, again, like climate, like climate, like inequality. And my personal view would be, it's much more risky for us if we do not aggressively tackle those problems 
by leveraging the data and computing power that we have today, we've never had in history, uh, rather than uh, over be already concerned about things like AI ethics. Now, we should be investing in AI ethics as well, along alongside with what we're doing over here. And there are plenty of uh, experts in the field, and many of them are personal friends of mine or uh, uh, friends and advisors of the firm, and uh, we take that very seriously. But when it comes down to the specific question around regulation and what the governments should do, I think, again, the risk uh, 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 overwhelmingly biased in the direction of not being able to move uh, aggressively enough in leveraging these new uh, resources and investing in them more aggressively. Sure. And before I close, uh, Peng, uh, some very quick words. What will 2022 bring? Um, so, you know, in, 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 uh, in the market making business, we m very much focus on what's going to happen the next, next minute and uh, maybe the next hour and next day. It's very hard for us to uh, get into the business of predicting what's going to happen next year. Uh, but very much, I think we're, we are uh, operating the period of uh, 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 uncertainty. Uh, I would expect some of these uncertainty to resolve and hopefully at least when it comes to the pandemic, uh, with the arrival of a more effective antiviral treatment, uh, which we still have every reason to be uh, to believe to be effective against even the new variant, that we start seeing uh, uh, somewhat of a, a what the end may look like for the pandemic. Uh, and uh, 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 so I personally very much look forward to that. And when it comes to Asia itself, I think uh, uh, today uh, we have hit on this consistent theme of uh, interconnectedness. Uh, I would very much like to see Asia continue to assert its position within the global economy and the global financial market by becoming more and more the example of uh, growing interconnectedness. Uh, uh, and uh, as uh, via technology, via electronification of its markets, uh, and via more partnership and collaboration across the different markets. And uh, uh, it, uh, it has been an honor to be a part of that. And we very much look forward to work with uh, Singapore Exchange and uh, all the audience uh, today uh, to be part of that uh, story in 2022 and beyond.